Hi, hello, Kritzi. So today's video will be a little different than normally because we're not doing tinkering in of itself, but I want to show you a very nice technology. The technology itself, it's called multi-material polyjet machine, and I think it would be really interesting for uh, the part of the audience that is 3D printing enthusiasts, but does not have access to that kind of machine because those machines get really expensive. I have a very cool project from work actually, for an exhibition. I will use that project to showcase this technology and you will be with me from start to beginning, from data preparation till finished product. So the thing is, we actually want to showcase another core facility of our university that does micro CT imaging. So basically CT imaging of very small details and they can go into microscopic scales. So they gave me a data set of a mosquito and this mosquito was scanned with like 2000 slices through its head. So it's a very blown up image of just the little head. And you can see its brain and you can see its trunk and everything. And that's what I want to segment. And then I want to print it so you can actually see through the skull and see the brain and it looks super alien. So we start out as we would start out with normal patient data with so-called DICOM imaging. DICOM means Digital Imaging and Communication in Medicine. So it's basically the step data of medical imaging. So what we have here, let me get that quick a little bit, is now a slice through a mosquito head. So you can see here these little balls, these are the eyeballs. So as you know, a mosquito, a fly and whatever, they have faceted eyes. So they see all around them and they see everything in slow motion apparently. Really cool. And here in the middle you can see the trunk, like basically where it drinks blood through. With this program, it's a so-called segmentation software, I can now turn pixels or like light pixels into cloud data or voxels. So let me quickly open up another program where I already prepared a little bit more. As you can see, I made the hat slightly see-through. Basically here you have the hat, the trunk and the brain. So that is what we want to print today. And using multi-polyjet, we can actually print it as you see it here. Now we have to slice. Polyjet also needs a slicer. For that we use Grab cut print. That's just the slicer that came with the machine manufacturer itself. We have to scale it down to the maximum we can have. I want to make it as big as possible. So it will be around the size of a human skull at the end. So now there is the hat. And I think we can even scale it up a little bit more. Now we have to apply color to it. So for that, let me quickly mark the outside shell so basically the head of the mosquito and i go over here and i just simply choose see-through material so the brain itself brain color in hex we go a little darker on the scale because i want to have like vivid colors you know what i mean so that is the color for brains here i can input my hex code and my trunk part, I will simply color blue because it's just to showcase it. Of course, in reality, it would have a different color. What I am really eager to know is how much material will we actually use for that. It's a heavy boy. Uh, so I press estimate, so it now calculates the whole printing process with all its waste and stuff like that. So I will use up 800 milliliters of white, two and a half kilograms of clear, 100 milliliters of cyan, 100 milliliters of magenta, and 100 milliliters of yellow, and about 1.1 kilograms of support material. Let's prepare the machine. Follow me. Most people don't have industrial 3D printers at home. That's why I'm excited to announce our partnership with one of the most competitively priced and high quality manufacturers out there. PCBWay. PCBWay is very renowned for their PCB manufacturing capabilities. They also offer industrial grade 3D printing and with worldwide shipping it will show up within days on your doorstep. As you see we are currently in our point of care manufacturing lab at the University Hospital in Basel. This lab basically does all its services for patient care. It was founded by Professor Dr. Florian Thüringer and we are now a crucial part of the hospital's ecosystem so we print a lot of uh, parts for doctors and surgeons for treatment of patients basically. I have another video about exactly that. It's really amazing. I scanned my own skull and made my skull for home so 
Maybe watch that, it's super interesting. So this is a Polyjet 3D printer. This one specifically is the J5 Medijet. So it is meant for medical operations or for medical printing. It's a very precise system with a lot of stuff going on. So in here we have our printing bag. Special about that is that this printing bed actually spins. So here no movement is done by any component in there, like back and forth, like you would know it from another 3D printer, like FDM or whatever. So actually the plate itself spins with the part on it and then it's printed. If you look very closely, if I put my finger in front, you might see it, you see like a little shadow. So this little shadow here, these are the nozzles. It has hundreds of tiny, like, holes in these metal bars and inside here you basically have the liquid material and each of these tiny little holes has its own valve and it can open and close using a crystal and shoot out basically micro droplets of liquid onto the build platform or onto whatever is below it it will go very close of course like a layer height here is about 0.016 millimeters so after it's printed on very precisely using those nozzles only where it's needed you have here a roller you can see it spin if you look here and this roller actually flattens whatever was printed that's why it's so polished here and it basically rolls over it to really flatten it out and over here this little guy that's a uv lamp so the uv lamp then will harden the material because it's a resin and it's uv curable it prints here, it rolls here, and it hardens here, and that's why it spins. So with that, you can print very fast, for example, multiple parts on one plate that are all finished at the same time. What is actually really cool to know is like the droplets that come out here, the micro droplets, they are a few pictoliters. That's very tiny amount of material. So back here, that's the perching unit, and here you have like a little plastic scraper, then that cleans out your nozzle. So the principle on how that machine works is basically the material down here is pumped through a whole system into those print heads and then like squirted on top as I explained to you. But the cool thing about this machine, because it's a multi-material polyjet machine, is that it actually can mix the material while doing it. So it can achieve different colors and different mechanical properties as well out of these five base materials that it has. And it's really cool because you can basically print something like that. So this one is a polyjet print. It's not printed on this machine, it's printed on the bigger sister of it. And this one is really cool because it has like hard material here for the bone. It has like a flesh-like material here. And even the brain is like rubber-like. All of these veins are also rubber-like and the eyeball and stuff like that is softer than the skin. So the thing is, each of those canisters is between 400 and 700 Swiss francs per piece. So basically a liter of this material runs you 700 Swiss francs. It's on the expensive side, yes but also what you can do with it is just worth it. So this isn't your tinkering machine for home, only if you're rich basically, but like the outcome of it, like high gloss, high precision parts, it's just a game changer in 3D printing. I sent the data to the printer and it shows me, hold your horses, like 63 hours and 29 minutes. So while it is a fast 3D printing technology. The layer are very thin and also remember we're printing a see-through part like completely clear. So it is basically a hundred percent infill. Just set your FDM 3D printer to a hundred percent and print something big like that. It would not be that much faster even on 0.2 millimeter. So let's start. It already made me acknowledge that even though I just refilled all of the materials to full status, that it will basically run out of clear material after two days. So I have to come back and fill it, but I mean, I'm working here, so I can do that. So preparation started now. It does some cleaning routines and then it starts printing.
Okay, after 60 hours of printing, our part is finally finished. I mean, 60 hours sounds like a lot, but actually you have to see each layer is only 0.0016 millimeters high. So it's very, very precise, 16 microns. So this is the part. You can already see it has like very smooth surfaces on top where we don't have support structures. Of course, you have like a little bit of roughness going on. That's what we actually have to polish out. And on the lower side, we have our support structures. So with these support structures, I can simply like cut them off. They're basically a little bit like wax, you could say. And those can be basically taken away by hand, like with a little bit of effort. And also like the small little rests are then made with, uh, like removed with a water blasting. What I like to do is like remove big chunks. So later in the water blaster, I don't have the big chunks like just laying around. I can just simply rip it off. And you see here is already the part. And this part has now a matte finish. So everything that is touched by the support structures gets like a matte finish to it. Look at this, <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, here, like when I put water on, you can see how see-through it will become. And you see like the brain is mostly behind the eyes. And like back here, it's just like muscle tissue. And the blue trunk goes in here. Here you can see, that's where he sucks the blood through. And it goes here through the brain and then comes out here. And like in the brain itself, it's like triangular. It's really cool. And like from the back side, you can also see a lot of brain. It's like nearly the size of my head, right? That's my identical twin. Like you can see how see-through it is. And all these little layer lines, they will disappear after polishing. I don't know how much of the hair I can save, but I hope a few of them. And normally it has hairs here as well. <laughs> don't put that in the video. <laughs> So we're inside Switzerland Innovation Park right now. That's the place where we do the exhibition. It's basically the entrance to the whole building. And before I show you the outcome of our mosquito hat, I want to quickly show you my other exhibition model I did actually for my core facility. It's something very special about it. You see this little gear here. You see that like it's about three millimeters in diameter. That's called micro SLA. But then actually here on this class plate, there are 50 different gears printed in the middle of it, but you can actually not see them with a the bare eye. That is called nanoscribe technology. It's a two photon printing technology. So if you're interested in seeing how this technology works and do something with me with it, leave a comment down below. And other than that, now enjoy the cinematics of the Mosquito Head.